Hello everyone, we are discussing the subject science of clothing comfort. Now, before we proceed further, let us first try to see what we have already discussed. Then it will be easy for us to continue further. Okay. So, we have already discussed on first we have uh, tried to understand the concept of clothing comfort, what is there. So, first need and selection of clothing we have discussed, there are uh, various factors on which selection of clothing uh, depends. Then we have discussed basic elements of clothing comfort, there are uh, different uh, elements uh, different uh, like uh, four different factors, four apes of clothing comfort, those we have discussed. Then clothing comfort and wearer's attitude we have discussed. So, even if a fabric is uh, comfortable in all sense, but wearer's attitude is also important, those aspects we have discussed. Then human and clothing interaction, after that understanding clothing comfort, overall understanding clothing comfort we have discussed. In next segment in psychology and comfort. So, psychology, psychophysical, physiological factors of clothing comfort we have discussed, then psychophysics, laws of psychophysics, wear trial technique has been discussed, then psychological aspects of aesthetic comfort which is very important, even if the fabric is uh, totally comfortable in uh, thermophysiologically like uh, uh, tactile uh, comfort, but if it is aesthetically not uh, pleasant, so we may not be actually comfortable. Next discussed that neurophysiological aspects of clothing comfort, where in uh, we, uh, we have discussed in detail the different uh, nerve endings, different sensors available uh, in our skin which sense different sensations of uh, mechanical sensation and thermal sensation. So, uh, mainly two types of sensors are there, one is mechanical sensor and uh, thermal sensor. Another that uh, effectively uh, for humidity stimulation, humidity sensor, there is no specific sensors are available, those aspects we have discussed. Then sensory perception of human body, how the sense transmitted to our brain, brain how brain reacts those part we have discussed and physiological requirement of human body. So, uh, there are uh, metabolic heat, body temperature, so how metabolic heat is lost and uh, how, what are the phenomena of how the sweating takes place, the, all this we have discussed which are directly related to the comfort of human. After that tactile aspects of clothing comfort was discussed in detail, where human tactile response like touch, pressure, how these are related with the clothing, how clothing selection of clothing or type of clothing affect all the tactile uh, sensation. So, fabric handle attributes which is actually indirectly related with the tactile sensation and a measurement of human fabric handle characteristics, mainly Kawabata evaluation system for fabrics and fast methods those we have all uh, discussed in details and uh, nozzle extraction principle and how no, uh, using how nozzle extraction that nozzle extraction force is related with the subjective uh, uh, assessment of clothing that uh, we have discussed in detail. Then fabric parameters affecting, affecting tactile sensation that what are the different fabric parameters, fabric bending rigidity, fabric uh, frictional characteristics, compression, how are all these characteristics uh, related with the tactile sensation of clothing. Then thermal uh, transmission behavior of uh, clothing we have discussed, thermoregulation in human body thermal distress condition, if it is uh, thermoregulation, normal thermoregulation takes place in uh, normal temperature, but in extreme uh, temperature, extreme cold or extreme heat condition that 
it comes under thermal distress condition and uh, thermoregulation through clothing system, thermal comfort of clothing, heat exchange through clothing that we have discussed, then transient heat which actually gives warm cool touch that is uh, the heat which is transmitted from our skin to the cloth immediately within a uh, second normally. So, how then we have uh, discussed the how the thermal transmission characteristics are measured and what are the different practical parameters like mate, glow and uh, talk, uh, how we can how are they related with each other this we have discussed and how this values this uh, glow is actually practically used in application thermal transmission characteristics of fabrics in detail we have discussed various factors which affect the thermal transmission characteristics those have been discussed. So, till now we have discussed all these aspects now we are going to start the moisture transmission characteristics and how are they related with the clothing comfort. Apparently, it seems that uh, uh, moisture transmission is not that important only heat transmission is important. Now, we will try to understand how the how important the moisture transmission characteristics for clothing comfort to have a clothing com comfortable clothing. So, to for designing comfortable clothing the moisture management is extremely important because the thermal transmission we can only control by imparting the imparting the air pocket within the uh, clothing but moisture transmission is extremely important we can totally design clothing it depends on the type of fiber used type of yarns used yarn structure fabric structure everything is related even type of uh, polymer what type of polymer we use so we will discuss all these aspects of moisture transmission moisture normally trans get transmitted in two forms one is in uh, vapor form which is we called in sensible perspiration another is the sensible perspiration which is in liquid or sweat form so this total moisture management is extremely important so first let us try to see the perspiration from human body as i have mentioned transmit through the clothing to the atmosphere from human body in two forms one is liquid form which is insensible or sweat form and second is insensible it is a in a vapor form. So, in our discussion we will first discuss in detail the liquid transmission form and then we will discuss the vapor transmission. So, if we see the liquid transmission, liquid transmission takes place in two stages. First stage when liquid comes into contact with the cloth with the fabric surface, the fabric has to first get wet that means, liquid should wet the fabric or here liquid we talk about uh, here in clothing comfort liquid is the, the sweat, sweat has to wet the cloth. What does wet meaning? Wetting here means that the liquid has to penetrate inside the structure that is first requirement for liquid transmission and if it penetrates it is not the end that means it has to travel travel through the structure and that is called wicking. So, it has got two stages wetting and wicking. So, we will we'll try to understand if a fabric or if a textile structure has got wetting nature very good it it is wets, but it cannot wick those type of fabrics are not suitable for clothing. Those fabrics we can use for wife or absorbent type cloth, but definitely we cannot use for clothing because in clothing after the water 
penetrates inside the structure, the total water should get transmitted. Then only that will be transmitted to other side of the fabric and ultimately it will get evaporated. If the fabric only waits, it's a, it waiting is there, it does not transmit that means it will start holding the moisture or will holding that liquid inside the structure the fab that it will not be able to transmit that means the, the total pores will get saturated will be filled. So, fabric will be that clothing will be useless after a certain time. So, all these aspects we will uh, discuss. So, liquid transmission if wetting or wicking if one of them is not perfect it is not balanced it is not actually these are synchronized then the fabric will fail particularly for clothing. So, if it suppose the fabric is very good in wetting wicking it does not wet that it will also not help because the water the liquid will not penetrate inside the structure and no liquid will be available for wicking. So, this two has to be there this two have to be there because this two wetting and wicking both will go simultaneously. Similarly, the transmission of vapor from from the skin from our body it takes place through different mechanism. Mainly there are four mechanisms first is diffusion it transmits through diffusion then absorption and desorption. So, diffusion is in the vapor form it actually it is driven by the vapor pressure and absorption desorption means fiber material will absorb the moisture in vapor form and it will get transmitted and then desorption will take place it will evapor get evaporated in other side. So, from inside the moisture in vapor form will get absorbed then it will be transmitted through the fiber it is not through the pores through pores when it gets transmitted it is diffusion and if it gets transmitted through the fiber structure which is very slow it is absorption and desorption. Third one is adsorption and transmission what is that adsorption means moisture will get adsorbed in the on the surface of the fiber typically in the a little bit uh, in the liquid form micro uh, droplets form and then it will get transmitted through the surface surface and it will ultimately go outside other surface and from there it will be evaporated so that uh, phenomena is known as adsorption and transmission and last one is that forced convection. So, in case of wind blowing through the fabric surface clothing surface it will take away all the moisture vapor and then in with that forced convection the moisture will get transmitted. So, we will discuss all these aspects ok. First we will start with the moisture transmission in liquid form. So, in clothing if we see liquid what is that liquid liquid we talk about it is a basically sweat. So, before we discuss about the wetting and wicking we must know the what is sweat how do we measure the sweating rate. So, so to understand the sweating rate so it is actually perspiration in vapor form and perspiration in liquid form. So, heat transmission uh, through the vapor and uh, liquid form we actually effectively transmit our uh, heat. So, here we are not discussing the heat flow dry heat flow through convection conduction and radiation because we have already discussed. So, these two aspects we will discuss here. So, what is sweating rate how do we measure basically sweating rate for any activity it is a total amount of actual sweat we actually perspire okay, we actually uh, remove we release the sweat per unit time 
that is actually sweating rate. So, typical example is that the sweating rate for a particular say activity. So, in activity particular activity pre practice mass. So, before the activity before before the practice mass of the person is taken in kg and post practice mass. So, post practice mass it is uh, we take. So, if we do not take extra water fluid or if we do not urinate if we do not release any uh, other form of liquid then if we do not release any uh, form of liquid then this difference the pre practice and post practice the mass is difference is mainly due to the release of sweat. And suppose if we take water if we drink water and if we actually release urine. So, that has to be to readjust the mass. So, minus post practice urine volume plus fluid consumed during practice. So, this if we take that is the total effective sweat released and this total effective sweat released divided by time. So, that is the total sweating rate. So, sweating rate is we know. So, we have we know that different activity level the sweating rate will be different. If our activity is high then our sweating rate will be different. Okay. So, let us see the actual value. So, it can go from 100 milliliter to 8000 milliliter per day. So, that depending on activity if we are actually sitting idle if we are totally taking rest our sweating rate will be very low and if we are active then the sweating rate will be very high that we have already mentioned somewhere. So, maximum sweating rate SR max is actually it is due to during uh, running or bicycling at different activity. So, we measure the sweating rate normally this exercise that cycling and uh, walking running this all bicycling. So, all these activities for uh, research we conduct in hot climate chamber or in desert. So, these are the uh, two standard places one can do uh, study. Why hot climatic chamber? Because at that uh, condition the sweating rate will be high. So, sweating rate due to marathon it is a standard sweating rate due to marathon is 1000 to 1200 gram per hour that amount of sweat in it is in the cold session and in hot session it is a 1.5 kg to 2 kg 1.5 liter to 2 liter the sweat per hour we release. So, for high activity for even for soccer and all this thing we have seen that it is a very high activity this is the amount of sweat we uh, release. Now, try to see what are the factors which affect the moisture transmission through clothing. So, we know that amount of sweat we generate and that amount of sweat we have to manage through the clothing. So, in a liquid form. So, if we want to manage those uh, clothing those uh, sweat. So, we must know what are the factors. So, first factor is that moisture content of the clothing. So, if the moisture content already it is very high in the clothing that means, the it will affect the moisture transmission of the clothing. Type and structure of the material this part we will di discuss in detail like if a fabric is very compact or if it is highly porous. So, both these factors will affect. Also, suppose a yarn made of parallel filament yarn and another yarn made of say staple fiber twisted highly twisted staple fiber. So, this two structure will affect the moisture transmission. Similarly, particularly in liquid form. Similarly, a fiber with diameter variation 
like, uh, like cotton natural any natural fiber will have diameter variation. So, this fiber if we uh, manufacture yarn out of that ultimately the pores the capillary pore structure will be will not be uniform it will be non uniform structure. So, effectively it will transmit liquid in in slow fashion slow transmission will be there. there. Then perspiration rate if we perspire normally okay, in that case the particular fabric will be able to transmit that moisture that liquid at a certain rate and moisture will get evaporated. But if the perspiration level is very high if we start releasing the sweat at very high level and if the, the absorption or transmission wicking rate weighting rate is not balanced then our moisture transmission will get affected. If the fabric structure is saturated then then it will get uh, it will affect the moisture transmission and atmospheric condition depending on the humidity wind speed temperature. Sup, uh, suppose at high humidity level the fabric will not be able to release the moisture at that rate because the air is already saturated evaporation will not take place. So, that moisture transmission will be affected. Similarly, if the wind blowing is there that we have mentioned that it is a uh, forced convection will take place that in that case the moisture transmission will be high even the temperature also affect. Okay. So, this aspects we will discuss. So, moisture content of the fabric type and structure of the material, perspiration rate of a person and atmospheric condition. Okay. Now, principles of transmission through clothing. So, how the moisture, how the liquid gets transmitted through the clothing. So, in normal activity level, so when metabolic heat produced by the body is transmitted to the atmosphere by conduction, convection and radiation. So, in normal activity level. So, and also in the vapor form it, it a moisture will get transmitted through the vapor form. So, in normal activity level we do not perspire in, uh, in the sweat form. Okay. So, normally we release the meta whatever metabolic heat we produce we release in terms of dry heat that is conduction, convection and radiation and also in the form of vapor. But in high activity level what happen will we start sweating and sweat comes in the liquid form and in high activity level total characteristics of transmission total phenomena of moisture transmission changes it changes from vapor form to the liquid form. So, the same fabric has to act in sweat form. So, uh, that accordingly depending on our activity level we must know the type of sweating. So, if we know the type of sweating and rate of sweating then we can design our clothing. So, for high activity clothing for high activity level will be entirely different from the clothing for normal activity level. For normal activity level if we want to manage the moisture. So, we have to take care of the vapor transmission and in high activity level we have to take care of the liquid form. So, let us see this is an interesting picture. So, this, this shows the metabolic rate and environmental temperature. So, in y axis the whatever heat uh, in terms of metabolic heat or uh, different forms of heat are there and in x axis it is a temperature and it, it shows for any standard fasting dressed human. So, this is are the this is the curve. Now, let us see the weight and dry heat loss as well as metabolic heat and basal metabolic rate is measured in weight what. So, in what the here it is it measures weight dry heat and basal meta BM are 
basal metabolic rate BMR and metabolic heat. First and it uh, the curve here it starts from 0 degree Celsius to it is uh, goes up to 45 degree say 40, 45 degree Celsius. Okay. This is uh, 40 uh, degree and here 37 degree Celsius means it is our human core temp body core temperature and this is the 26 degree Celsius when the person is dressed normally. So, uh, typical comfortable temperature is we can say it is around say 20 to 30 degree Celsius. So, 26 degree Celsius we can call it as comfort point. So, at that comfort point whatever the metabolic rate that comfort point whatever metabolic heat rate that is known as basal metabolic rate the BMR. So, and this black curve black curve shows the metabolic heat metabolic rate and dry heat loss is the rate curve. Now, try to see here at lower temperature say 5 degree Celsius what happened dry heat loss means it is a conduction convection radiation. So, in totally so to, uh, if we take uh, all these things uh, conduction convection radiation this uh, rate curve the rate graph that at lower temperature what happens as we have seen at lower temperature as the temperature difference that is uh, the temperature difference is very high the heat loss will be through the conduction convection radiation will be very high. So, that is why this is the heat loss is very high and it goes on reducing it reduces as the temperature increases. So, temp as temperature is increasing it is going it is re reducing and it becomes 0 at 37 degree Celsius. What does it mean 37 degree Celsius the it uh, the uh, that is the atmospheric temperature it is same as the our body temperature typically. So, there is no difference in heat. So, heat is not tra getting transmitted, but if we change if we increase the atmospheric temperature further what will have, have what what will take place this is the actually heat uptake instead of heat release it will will start receiving heat that we have seen in the form of conduction convection and radiation. So, this is the dry heat curve and if we see the weight that means the in terms of perspiration so which is important the, the it shows in the green curve and here it is a total heat loss. Now, in at lower temperature whatever heat loss takes place it is a insensible perspiration. So, that is the instance very low amount of moisture gets transmitted, but as we increase as we have mentioned earlier as the temperature increases beyond 10 degree Celsius then the sweating starts sweating and it is uh, it increases it it is very high at say 37 degree Celsius it increases and as we go on increasing say 40 45 degree Celsius the sweating rate increases it reaches peak around say 45 40 degree Celsius then it goes on increase. So, it, we start sweating profusely. So, here that means at the green portion above say 26 degree Celsius or above 37 degree Celsius the if the temperature is there. So, we, we start uh, sweating and uh, then we have to ma manage this sweat. So, from this curve so if we know this graph if we understand this graph clearly so we can design the clothing depending on the climatic condition and the black graph is known it is a source that metabolic heat. So, at lower temperature as we have discussed at uh, we have to have high metabolic heat because of the extra because at lower temperature we generate extra metabolic heat due to our body physiology. So, it, uh, it is very high. So, as the temperature increases temperature increases the metabolic heat also metabolic heat generation reduces gradually 
and at extreme comfort condition at comfort point it is a lowest metabolic heat. So, this is the almost the lowest one then it again increases. So, these are the this is the total basic graph which shows the heat at different different types of heat transmission at different climatic condition and knowing these things we can design our clothing. So, this at high temperature if we talk about if we are designing our clothing at for high temperature we have to take care of the clothing which will deal with the which will deal with the liquid transmission. And if we design a clothing for lower temperature, so we do not have to bother about the liquid transmission, we have to take care of the moisture vapor transmission. Okay. So, now let us see. So, what are the comfort and discomfort sensation due to moisture? So, this picture shows here the whatever moisture vapor and liquid our body generates it gets transmitted through the clothing to the atmosphere. So, there is no vapor pressure generated in our microclimate between skin and the fabric no vapor pressure is generated here this is so this is this creates comfortable climate. So, we must understand the level of moisture vapor form moisture in vapor form level of moisture in liquid form then we have to design our clothing. So, that it the total vapor form and liquid form moisture gets transmitted at certain rate the rate at which our body is generating. So, that that will give us totally comfortable sensation, but in this picture which shows that the produced perspiration does not pass through the clothing completely it gets transmitted, but this is this is actually it does it is not balanced that means, whatever perspiration we generate in liquid form or vapor form it is not transmission transmitting. So, it is not giving comfort, but if it is more like it, it does not uh, transmit or if it at all transmit it is uh, at very lower rate. So, that will give us this uncomfortable. So, that uh, that is why and ultimately it may give our heat stress because the vapor pressure which is generated in the inside our microclimate it is not getting transmitted. So, that means our body our uh, due to our physiology will not be able to secrete that much uh, sweat and then our internal body core temperature will increase. So, it will ultimately give heat stress. So, moisture, so we have seen that moisture management and clear understanding of the role of moisture transmission through clothing is required. So, if we know the our body if we know our metabolic rate if we know the the our atmospheric condition if we know our activity level accordingly we have to design our clothing to manage the moisture. So, this picture shows the a material absorbs sweat and moisture very well it absorbs and then the material disperse moisture in the open air. So, it absorbs moisture very well whatever moisture in the liquid form moisture in the vapor form it absorbs and it transmits and disperse to the atmosphere at the same rate. Okay. This type of fabric will give a sense of comfort because humidity in the skin clothing layer remains low. So, humidity has to be low in the skin layer skin and clothing like microclimate if we can maintain the humidity and humidity in the skin and clothing layer that is microclimate then we will feel comfortable which is very important. Temperature maintaining temperature in the microclimate is not that important because at cold temperature we have to maintain high uh, at cold humidity uh, cold atmosphere we have to ma maintain high temperature 
at high atmospheric temperature we have to maintain low low temperature within the microclimate but humidity has to be always low humidity in the sweat form or in a vapor form has to be always low irrespective of whether it's a hot climate or even cold climate even in the cold climate in the sub zero temperature if the humidity is high in microcli microclimate we will feel uncomfortably next is that a material absorbs moisture and sweat well a particular material it absorbs moisture in liquid form or sweat in the liquid form it it's a, a very well absorption but it it cannot disperse at that rate it's poor dispersion the example is cotton so example is cotton for cotton so that at very high activity level if we wear cotton uh, clothing what will happen it will absorb initially it will absorb but it will not be able to release the moisture so ultimately we will feel coolness because the fabric the total structure total clothing will get wet and as it is wet so heat transmission through water is at a very high rate so transmissivity through water is high than much higher than air so it will lose its uh, insulation and will uh, will start releasing heat at very high rate so then we will feel coolness okay and another fabric with the material absorbs moisture and sweat poorly which is which actually that is not hydrophobic fiber which does not absorb moisture normal I am talking about the normal say normal polyester it does not absorb moisture due to it is it is a hydrophobic fiber and sweat and moisture remains in the micropores. So, it does not absorb and micro space between skin and clothing that is a microclimate at microclimate it remains because the fabric is not taking up that moisture. So, that then you will feel sense of dampness and as it is damp the humidity is high irrespective of the fact whether it is a cold climate or hot climate we will feel dampness and we will feel uncomfortable. So, typical example is the normal polyester why I am telling normal polyester because if we can if we can design a polyester fiber with a different shape then the things will be totally different we will discuss. Now, in this picture you can show you can see that here that is a, the dark dots are sweat form a liquid form and these dots are this is this small circles are in vapor form solid circle and the hollow circles are in uh, this is in vapor form. Now, if we see this is the 100 percent polyester say it it does not absorb okay. it gives a, uh, as we have seen it is a dampness bad microclimate due to high humidity because this is the clothing it does not absorb moisture. Okay. So, the heat flow heat transmission through the clothing due to the moisture it is not high. So, it is a it transmits moisture in the heat at the lower rate and transmits the moisture in sweat form or insensible form in lower rate that means this microclimate zone becomes humid and hot. So, it is a it gives a dampness it gives uncomfortable nature. Another fabric if we can design that is a say cotton as we have discussed it absorbs moisture in liquid form. So, it is it is in the liquid form it is absorbing it, it is coming okay. and also vapor form it is coming, but the release of moisture is very slow. Okay, three arrows so it is a release of moisture that means the moisture remains in the structure the fabric become remains wet. So, what does it mean if fabric remains wet. So, it is a thermal conductivity becomes high thermal resistance is low. So, it will release heat at very high rate. So, it becomes cool. So, coldness will take we feel cold if it is so and the fabric becomes remains wet 
fabric is wet we are feeling cold. So, it this happens in case of 100 percent cotton. Now, if we can design say polyester with special shaped polyester and different types of specially shaped polyester are there like a trilobal, dumbbell shape, okay, different flat or say 4 dg type polyester. In those fabrics if we can uh, design from this uh, although it is a polyester it is hydrophobic, but due to this special shape the contact angle is reduced okay, and it becomes it, it weights very nicely and once the polyester wet and then it will transmit moisture through wicking. Okay. So, in the liquid form. So, it immediately it absorbs moisture due to the wetting and due to wicking it goes out and from there the sweat gets evaporated. So, the fabric remains dry, the clothing microclimate remains almost dry and proper heat transmission is there. So, this will give us very comfortable weather, Comf it fabric will be uh, very comfortable particularly at high sweating rate that means, at high activity. So, we will see for high activity we normally use try to use the polyester fiber with different shaped uh, cross section. Now, we will see the moisture transmission, moisture transmission takes place in uh, two forms as we have mentioned one is in liquid form and another is in vapor form. So, we will start with the liquid form. Okay. So, the liquid transmission through the clothing takes place in two stages. One is wicking stage, uh, waiting stage and then is wicking stage. Okay. So, wicking and water absorption. So, liquid water transmission through clothing primarily depend on the fiber properties. First is the what type of fibers we are using. Fiber water molecular attraction that is the surface tension of the fiber and water which is important. If a fiber has a very high surface tension with water that means, it will not weak, it will not get wet. So, first we have to select a fiber which is having lower surface tension and this surface tension we can actually manage, we can control by even for a same fiber, same polymer, we can control the surface tension by redesigning the cross sectional shape. Next is that wicking, it depends on the capillary pore distribution and structure of yarn and fabric. So, what type of capillary pores are there, if whether the pore is uniform or non-uniform, whether the what is the uh, diameter of pore. So, all these aspects control the wicking characteristics. So, the liquid water transmission as we are discussing now liquid water transmission, it takes place in two stages. Stage 1 it is wetting that is initial process and stage 2 is wicking the next process. So, we will start with the wetting. So, it is a classical Young's equation is there, where this picture shows it is a drop which is actually on a fabric surface and from this drop we can make out the contact angle. Okay. If it is the drop, so this, this is the drop uh, of liquid and this picture shows that it is a, this is the contact angle, contact angle theta. Okay which is the and gamma S L, gamma S L is the this is the gamma S L. Okay. It is a solid and liquid that is surface tension, uh, surface tension between the solid liquid interface that is interfacial free energy. Gamma S V 
this is the gamma S V, which is actually tangent to this this uh, droplet. Okay. Gamma S V is the solid surface energy, surface free energy that is between solid and uh, sorry this is L V, L V that is uh, liquid and vapor, surface tension between liquid and vapor. Another component is this is S V solid and vapor, surface tension between solid and vapor. So, if we see the relationship between this it is uh, by the Young's equation which shows that gamma S V minus gamma S L equal to this is the way it is balanced by gamma L V cos theta, where theta is the contact angle. So, here it, it is a contact angle the it involves in the fluid spreading where fiber air that is fiber air interface is replaced by fiber liquid interface. So, this is the fiber air interface which is replaced by the fiber liquid in interface. So, here in this picture you will see the if we here it is a uh, in the top this is the liquid and in between it there are fiber and air interface. And when liquid drop is poured it is a play you are dropping the liquid on the fabric surface this fiber air interface is being replaced by the fiber liquid interface that means, it becomes wet. So, whatever fiber liquid fiber air interface it will be taken away by the fiber liquid interface. So, that means, the fabric becomes wet. So, the what are the conditions of wetting those we will discuss okay? and uh, those we will discuss in the uh, next class till then goodbye. Thank you.